Now, the 50th World Economic Forum is currently underway in the Swiss city of Davos with an agenda that focuses heavily on climate change. World leaders struggle to tackle the crisis. The four-day annual gathering of some of the world's top political and business leaders in the Swiss Alps is seeking to meet head-on the dangers of both the environment and the economy from global warming. A little earlier today, Finland's Prime Minister, Sanna Marin, called on Thursday for governments and companies to do more to ensure women are treated fairly, saying that equality would not happen by itself. Gender parity is a big theme at this year's forum, with a host of uh, reports highlighting continued wealth and opportunity gaps worldwide. The SABC's economics reporter, Diabo Sidhu, is attending the summit, and uh, we join her now live in Davos for an update. Uh, very good evening, afternoon. I don't know what time it is there, but I do know it's pretty cold, I'm sure. Uh, as a matter of fact, Peter, today it's a little warmer. Um, it's not as cold as it was when we first got here, so even my body is adjusting, and I'm a lot, lot, I'm a lot happier and much more pleasant person to be around because of the warmth. Uh, Peter, yes, uh, so when we left South Africa uh, last week and during the weekend, we all had expectations about what Team South Africa would communicate to the world. Um, uh, the Minister of Finance, who is leading the delegation, um, did brief us about... he. The expectations from uh, the questions from the international community about what he expects them to ask and what approach uh, the team would be taking. But I thought that uh, we would have the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Ms. Nalid Pando, to join us to give us an update of who they've met on the corridors, uh, what kind of conversations they've had, and uh, where we are going as you know, we are now drawing to a close of the World Economic Forum here in Davos, which is happening tomorrow. Uh, and I, I believe we'll be having a press briefing. But for now to understand uh, with the minister, you know, what the conversations minister has been on the corridors when we left South Africa. There was a lot of uh, expectation from the team, knowing what you will be asked. Was what you expected indeed what you were asked and what has been your response? Uh, well, what is interesting about Davos is you speak uh, to many people from different parts of the world. So I've had opportunity to speak to African leaders President of Ghana, President of DRC, President of Botswana, and other uh, ministers from other countries on the continent, as well as speak to the Prime Minister of Estonia, uh, colleagues from Panama, etc. So there's a wide variety of countries uh, represented here, and you have the opportunity to engage with all of them. The delegation of South Africa is not only made up of government, we also have a number of people from civil society as well as the business sector. And all of us are wearing uh, the scarf, so we are easily identifiable. Uh, you also uh, find that some of the issues Minister Mboweni raised are certainly part of the discussion. I've been asked a lot about ESCOM, for example, some questions about SAA, especially from people who want to come and visit our country. Um, and we've had to answer those questions as frankly uh, as is uh, possible because they want to know the truth. Uh, and, you know, you can't, uh, uh, you know, sugarcoat any of the problems that you have uh, when you are here because sometimes they know more than you do. Uh, so uh, we've engaged, but uh, we've also said there's a good story, a good part of South Africa, particularly about the people of South Africa, who we think are absolutely fantastic people who are ready to be part uh, of the world. I've been surprised that is a, an amazing amount of interest in the African Union. I found that uh, quite intriguing, but more particularly about South Africa coming into uh, chairing of the uh, African Union and everybody saying what are you going to do, what's South Africa's uh, focus uh, and priority for the year um, and also of course uh, some concern about the conflicts on the continent Lib Libya featured uh, a great deal uh, and we were able to share uh, uh, some of the president's thinking uh, with regard to those conflicts and the commitment 
uh, South Africa has adopted, that it will focus on peace building to a great degree uh, in ending the conflicts on the African continent. So lots of questions, um, questions about the role of women, gender-based violence in our country and steps being taken by the government. Some countries saying, well done, we've seen you're moving. We know there's much more you should do, but at least we have seen action being taken. Uh, address the social cohesion, address you know, the negative attitudes uh, that reside among some of the men, uh, but we are happy that you are, you are acting. Youth feature. All the countries are concerned about youth uh, unemployment. Uh, some worried about jobs and this fourth industrial revolution and the pervasive presence uh, of, of high-level technologies and whether we, as countries, whether rich or poor, about our ability to respond. Uh, one of the uh, ministers are present here uh, said that, listen, whether or not uh, you think it's going to happen, whether or not you believe job needs will change, please accept they are going to change. Start training your people today. So this was a strong message uh, that emerged from a number of the sessions. 75th year of the existence of the United Nations, huge concerns around some of the uncertainties in the world, especially with respect to trade, but also the threats to multilateralism. What's great about the forum, amazing attachment to us working as a global community, to us enhancing our collaboration. So all of us called for celebration of the United Nations, but also ensuring we empower it so that it continues to play its role in helping the world to overcome challenging global problems. Minister, with um, all those questions that have been asked um, and the responses that you gave, did you get a sense uh, that uh, there was a convincing done on the part of particularly maybe businesses that want to come to South Africa? Um, obviously, you mentioned the issue of SAA and ESCOM, and those are the big uh, threats, one can put it that way. Did you find that um, they are at most, or at least, the very least, convinced with the answers that are coming from yourselves? I think some were, uh, but I think there are still those who really are doubters and, and feel we haven't yet gone as far as we need to in order for them to say we want to invest. But you did get many who say, listen, I've already invested or I know a company that has, they're doing very, very well, we are looking at South Africa as our next destination. So you did get that. But I think there are questions South Africa has to answer, and it can only do so by practical action. Uh, Minister, um, I know that uh, obviously you attended uh, the forum in uh, the UK as well. Uh, what was the mood around there, and did you find that you brought the same mood uh, into Davos? From South Africa's side? Yes. Uh, well, the UK is a big trading partner for South Africa. We're doing very well. <laughs> But there are areas in which we'd like to see uh, greater action, greater trade between our two countries. We'd like to expand in agriculture. We also said to them we want to expand in telecommunications. We think there are huge opportunities there. Uh, they've gone a long way with renewable energies. So we said we'd like to share some uh, intelligence around what they've done to reduce emissions, to make greater use of renewable energy and they're interested in working with us. They're also very keen to work with South Africa on oil and gas and on other countries on the African continent. So from the side of the UK, I found a really jovial uh, UK anticipating very positively uh, the post-Brexit era, but uh, I think also alert to the fact that it's not going to be a smooth ride uh, but keenly um, attracting Africa to regard itself as a very important partner to the UK and admission from them that they may have been neglectful over the years.
Just two more issues, uh, Minister, that perhaps you could uh, answer in one go. The issue of climate change. I did meet a young uh, Ayaka, Ayake, um, who's a global uh, uh, climate change activist, uh, and I found that you know it was interesting to have a young person in Davos from South Africa um, who's very interested in saving uh, the environment and, and wants people to join in. Uh, and you also sat on a panel with that discussed uh, uh, leading uh, multilateralism yesterday. Can't you just share with us uh, how uh, your thoughts around uh, IIK and also the panel that you sat on? Well, uh, if I were to list the subject domains of uh, this year's uh, World Economic Forum, climate change will feature almost as number one. Uh, huge concerns. Uh, the world uh, believes we need to act. In fact, the Secretary General addressed the lunch uh, we had today uh, and uh, indicated the urgency uh, that still has to be shown by the world community. He feels we're not doing what we should. We're not doing as much as we should be doing given uh, the threat uh, that confronts our world. So uh, I would agree with the young people uh, that we all need to be far more serious in responding. Uh, and also, uh, I would want uh, that the young people start to argue that the richer world should do more to support the poorer parts and more vulnerable parts of the world to develop the ability to respond to the effects and impact uh, of climate change. So funding for adaptation, funding for scientific investigation, funding for technology and innovation, all of that is necessary. It's been promised in the past, but it has not been delivered. So clearly, uh, the young people have a strong voice, strong argument, but the entire world must act. And um, we did talk a little bit about on the pay. Uh, great concern about what's been happening with respect to the U.S.-China uh, trade uh, uh, conflict, uh, a feeling that this needs final resolution uh, because it makes all of us uncertain. A uh, great deal of uh, positive with respect to the recent phased uh, trade agreement that has been signed, but worry about what does phase mean? Does this mean it's going to be over many, many years? Or is the second phase going to be the final uh, conclusion of this, uh, uh, of what we're seeing? So um, everybody feeling China and the U.S., the biggest economies in the world, have an important obligation to bring stability to the trade regime. Because if we have continued uncertainty and instability, it harms our uh, possibility of growing our economies because we don't know what we should do. You know, should we produce more or less? Will there be someone to trade with or won't there be? Will the tariffs change? Will we be affected by those tariffs? So this uncertainty is not good uh, for global growth and you've already seen the lower predictions. The leadership all feel really U.S. and China. Please assist the world. Minister, thank you very much for your time. I know that you do have to rush um, uh, to other meetings, but I do thank you very much for joining us on SAPC News. Thank you very much. Thank you. Peter, that was Minister Naledi Pando. She's the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Give us an, giving us an update uh, on what has been said on the corridors and, of course, um, issues at home, obviously taking center stage. Um, uh, investors still wanting answers about you know, energy security, uh, issues of uh, SAA, and says they've been truthful as much as they can. And just to give you a synopsis, I know that very shortly uh, we will be going to uh, a photo opportunity where uh, Team South Africa will be meeting with uh, uh, the founder of the World Economic Forum, uh, Mr. Schwab, uh, Klaus Schwab, and I believe this is a special meeting because it's, it's out of the norm that it happens. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's a meeting that I believe he only has with the U.S. and others, and now he is meeting with the South African ministers. Unfortunately, we will not be in that meeting, but we will have an opportunity to take photos and to see them together, uh, which should be very interesting. Our viewers will not be starved of this. They'll be able to see that. And it's back to you in studio.
Ah, Diabosito. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, aren't you the lucky one? Mixing it up with the rich and famous in Switzerland. That's our economics reporter, Diabosito. We'll cross to her again a little bit later on if we can to get more updates on this uh, very important uh, gathering that happens uh, once a year in Davos in Switzerland. Right, we're going to take a break and when we come back, we'll have more for you.